Hello, ACCA Performance Management friends. My name is Steve. Today in this video, we are going to look at the practice platform, practice test number one, question 32, all about exam technique for the spreadsheet tool and limiting factor analysis. If you're finding this video helpful, please throw down a like and feel free to subscribe so you get more of them. All right, let's get started. I have the practice platform open. I've got question 32 open. We can check out the requirement. We see the verb is calculate a shortage, calculate a production plan, and then the total profit. So please try this question at home before we go further. Compare your work to mine. Let's talk about time management before we get started. You have 1.8 minutes per mark, so this six mark requirement should take you about 10 minutes. Now, in the spreadsheet, you'll be able to go much faster with practice. You should be able to do this question in five minutes with some practice. Now, let's talk about exam technique. There are no marks whatsoever for formatting, spreadsheet skills, or financial modeling. So we're going to keep our work super simple we're going to avoid fancy formatting. We're going to work in a clear, easy to follow manner so the marking team can easily give us marks. Okay, the first thing to do is to get that sh shortage. And we've got three products, don't we? We've got cakes, cookies, and shakes. Let's set up a template. We've got the columns. Let's set up the rows. Always a good idea to make a template before you get started, so you know where you're going, you know what you need to do. Avoid freestyling in the spreadsheet. So we need to know the grams per product. We need to know the demand per product. And then we can get the total. Then we can compare that to the beta that we have. And then we can get the shortage. Yes, this answer is going to look different than the model solution that you see in the in the back of your book, but that is fine. We're working in a spreadsheet in a very efficient way. So now that we have our template, let's load in the numbers. Okay, so it's a 0 0.5 for the cakes, a 0 0.2 for the cookies, a 1 for the shakes. Now let's load in our demands. We've got 11. 200, we've got 9, 800, we've got 7, 500. We can get the total using the power of the spreadsheet tool. It's going to be equal to cell B3 multiplied by cell B4. Okay, let's drag that to the right for a quick copy. Relative cell addressing helping us out. Guys, now let's make another column for total here. Let's use the sum function. We do that with an equal sign. Type in the word sum, open brackets, grab these. Okay. Beta that we have, that's 12,000. Okay. The shortage will simply be one minus the other. So that will be equal to E5 minus E6. Thank you, spreadsheet tool, for making things easy. There are no marks for formatting, as I said, so there's no reason to go crazy doing any fancy formatting here. This is super easy for the marking team to follow. Let's move now to our production plan. So let's make a heading so the marking team can follow without any ambiguity what we're doing. Let me grab those column headings one more time so it's easier for you nice people to see what I'm doing at home. Okay, so what do we need to do first? We need to get the contribution per unit. 
then we need to get the grams per unit and we can get contribution per unit of scarce resource and then we can rank those products. So we can get contribution. Let us get one more time the grams contribution per gram and then rank. Guys, there is my new template for this part. They were very nice, weren't they, giving us the contribution? Often they make us calculate that, so that's really just a matter of plugging those figures in. So my contribution is going to be 2.6, 1.75, 1 and 1.2. Now we can just grab those grams with a relative cell address. Let's just come up there. That cell in B11 will be equal to B3. And drag this over. Great. Now we can divide one by the other. So cell B12 will be equal to the contribution divided by the units of scarce resource. Drag that over guys and look at that spreadsheet helping us out. So now we have our ranking. First thing we're going to do, make the cookies. Then if we have any beta left over, we'll make cakes. And finally, if we have any left over that, we will make our shakes. So guys, we've got the ranking done. Okay, we know the rank. Let us now do the plan. So we, so we can do our product here in column A. Then we can do our units that we produce. We can show that with the hash sign. Then we can add beta used, beta remain. And then we can get the contribution from that row in our production plan. And look at this. I can just double click on a column separator to auto enlarge it. Okay, so let's now plug in the order of our products. First thing we have to do is that contract for the shakes. So no matter what, we've got to make those shakes for the contract. Then what do we need to do? cookies, cakes, and if there is anything left over, we could then do the remaining shakes. Okay. So we have to make 5,000 shakes, put 5,000 here, and the beta used will be equal to 5,000 multiplied by one. We could use the relative cell address and go up there and grab it, but I'm just right here. It's easier to retype it. I have that information right next to me. Okay, and we started with how much, everybody? We started with 12,000, so that will be equal to 12,000 minus C16. So I've got 7,000 left over. Now, my cookies, what's my total demand for cookies? 9,800. And a cookie takes 0 0.2. So that's going to be a 0.2. It's going to be equal to the B17 multiplied by 0 0.2. Okay, now cell D will be equal to what was left over after the shakes minus what we used for cookies. And that's nice with relative cell addressing. We can just start copying that down. Now, my demand for cakes. What is the full demand for cakes, everybody? Let's go back up there and have a look. 11,200. So let's see if we can make 11,200. That will be equal to, well, 11,200 in cell B18. And the cakes take 0 0.5, so cell C18 is multiplied that times 0 0.5. Let us copy this cell down, and we will copy 
D17 to D18, and I think it's going to go negative. And it went negative. Guys, we don't have enough beta to make all the cakes. So I will simply change out what's happening in cell B18. I'm going to do this. I've got 5040 remaining. I'm going to divide that by 0 0.5. That's the grams per cake. And I can make 10, 0, 8, 0. So the beta used will be 5040. Guys, that is my profit maximizing production plan. Let's now get the contribution per product. So we're going to do the contract shakes. So that's going to be equal to 5,000 multiplied by this contribution per unit, but minus the 20 cents because we're giving a discount, right? So it's going to turn that contribution into a 1.0. Because I'm mixing multiplication and subtraction, I'm using brackets to preserve the order of operations. And I get the 5,000 there. Okay, cookies. The contribution for the cookies will be equal to the number of cookies that we make multiplied by the contribution per unit of a cookie, which is there. We get 17,150. Same thing in cell E18. That's going to be equal to the cakes that we produce in B18 multiplied by that contribution. And there we have our contributions. Move that up. We're not going to make any shakes, so let's get rid of that row. And we can put a total here instead. That will be equal to the sum of the three cells above that sum function. Looking nice, let's throw down an underline. And there we go. Guys, if you're finding this helpful, please click the subscribe button so you'll get more of these in the future and like it if you're liking it. And last thing to do, everybody, let's subtract those fixed costs. So fixed costs are 3,000. So let's make a note here, fixed costs. Everyone in the marking team will know that abbreviation is totally fine. Fixed costs are $3,000, negative three. Okay, and now we can do our profit right here. And that will be equal to the sum of the two cells above. Put an underline there. Guys, look at the lovely exam technique we've used. Very simple, easy to follow spreadsheet. No fancy formatting happening. No fancy financial modeling. Everything laid out so the markers can find your figures easily and give you the marks that you have earned. Guys, I hope you found that helpful. Good luck on your exams. Bye for now.